Hey everybody, uh, my name is Andrew Whelan. Uh, I am a sociologist at the University of Wollongong and um, I'm going to tell you in a couple of kind of bite-sized uh, chunks of about 10 minutes or, or thereabouts, I'm going to tell you or, or give you some kind of um, things or whatever about uh, remix, about the idea of remix and what is, uh, what is remix, what is remix cultures, uh, what, what are they and so this is spread uh, across a few uh, a, a few a, a few uh, videos um, one of them will talk about um, the kind of history of the relationship between music and technology uh, one of them will talk about uh, breakbeats uh, in, in this one I'll tell you a little bit about why you might even care about uh, Remix, why, why should you, you bother being, uh, being interested uh, in that? And in one of them also I'll try to kind of tie everything together, wrap, wrap everything um, together. So I put some, I put like numbers on them, but actually I guess if you get the last one last and, and the first one first, you can kind of jumble up uh, the ones in the, in the middle in any order that you want. And um, the other thing I was going to say was like, if I, if like, uh, I'll try and give you like different examples or, or whatever. And some of them I'll actually just play them in the, in the video because uh, I think they're cool or something. And, but other ones, uh, if I think something is, you know, if, if I've got something that's all, like on YouTube that I think that you should probably check out. And I think it's, if I think it's kind of important or something, uh, then I'll actually like, I'll just plonk the link, uh, uh, the link there so you can, you can pause me and click on it, but, um, uh, I'll black the screen out if I think it's really important. Uh, that'll be like my, 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 my cue. Uh, uh, and like, I guess it depends on how you're going for time. Uh, but if I don't think it's that important, then I'll just have the, I'll just put the, the link someplace on the screen, but I'll keep going yak, yak, yak. Right, okay. So, okay, so maybe we should get started. All right. So, um, maybe one way to start uh, thinking about this is just actually to go, why, why should you care? Why should you care about the word uh, remix? Why should you care about the idea? of Remix and um, why why would academics get interested in an idea like Remix? What kind of uh, work might an idea like that start uh, doing for academics when they think about how media work and when they think about how culture is uh, articulated through media, when they think about the relationship between media and culture? And so uh, just as a way of trying to kind of do that as an example with which to think we could say we could start by going okay so what would be what would a reading look like that was kind of like a uh, a politics of culture uh kind of reading right and just as a thing to to think with uh while we kind of get through that it might be worth just pausing pausing me now and going and having a look at this quite famous uh, video, if you haven't seen it already, which is Buffy versus Edward, right? Or uh, Edward versus uh, Buffy, okay? So, so when you're looking at that, you know what are you what are you looking at actually, right? You're looking at uh, you're looking at Buffy and you're looking at uh, Edward from uh, Twilight, and you're seeing uh, Edward basically get kind of reconstituted in a certain kind of way, right? You're seeing characters that you you know, uh, but their meaning, their kind of social and their cultural meaning. Uh, is getting uh, changed, is is being uh, adapted, right? So you could say, well, they're being they're being remixed, right? It's a remix. It's like a, a mashup, right? Characters from two different fictional universes are introduced to each other in such a way that we understand, particularly uh, Edward from Twilight, as having certain kinds of. He becomes a bit strange, right? He gets to be a bit weird. It doesn't seem like 
when we think about Edward in the uh, Twilight universe, he seems to be, uh, I guess we're supposed to think that that's romantic or something, when we see how that seems in relation to the Buffy universe, we see that actually it's like he's like a stalker, right? It's actually weird and uh, creepy and unpleasant. And so, okay, so why, why is that interesting? Or why would uh, people who, uh, why, why would people who are interested in, uh, in something like, say, the politics of culture, why would that be interesting to them? Well, let's, uh, there's a word which is maybe useful for thinking about these kinds of things, and that word is détournement, okay? Détournement, uh, it's a fancy, fancy word. You know it must be clever because it's French. Uh, it's a word which means something a bit like derailment, right? Or... Uh, you know, turning, changing the direction of something. So this is a word that is used to talk about certain kinds of strategies, right, for interacting uh, with and through uh, media and culture, whereby meanings are subverted or undermined, right? So uh, it doesn't have to be uh, a remix. We could think about other ways of doing it. For instance, you could do a cover of a song in a certain kind of way where you change the meaning of the song, right? For instance, you could do a cover of Waltzing Matilda in such a way as to show that you were perhaps treating the text, the source text, in a sarcastic way. And people could understand that as being a certain kind of critical engagement with the text, right? So when you're looking at uh, Edward there in Buffy versus Edward, you're seeing him uh, in this different universe in such a way, and this is completely deliberate, right? The people who made that movie, they say that that's what they're, they're trying to do. They're going, oh yeah, we want to kind of show, we want to highlight, we want to produce a kind of critique of the ideology of gender as that is normalized in Hollywood, right? In the Twilight universe, it seems to be kind of normal that like a teenage girl would wake up in her bedroom with like a guy standing there watching her. She's supposed to think that we're supposed to think that that's, uh, that's romantic. What, what, what is that? Why, why is that, right? So where we're getting to, right, is a certain kind of position. So if we have this word detournement in our, in our heads, we're in a certain kind of position where we can think about remix as an intervention in the cultural flow, right? An intervention in the kind of flow of cultural meanings uh, and an intervention, consequently, in what we could consider to be an ideological flow, right? So let's say if we said, okay, so here's this kind of media kind of pumping uh, cultural and political, if you like, ideological messages at us, uh, you know, all of the time, one of the things that Remix uh, facilitates or that it allows is that it can uh, kind of expose or highlight uh, the political meanings of certain kinds of cultural texts which are, as it were, naturalized for us, right? Which we are, um, we're used to taking those things completely for granted, right? Like it could be that when we go and watch Twilight, we don't really think about that as potentially as a, as a text which has a kind of problematic, uh, you know, mobilizes uh, problematic ideas of gender in such a way as to naturalize them. Maybe we're not thinking about it in that kind of way, but maybe when we go and see Buffy versus Edward, that is highlighted to us, right? So the meaning of the text, the meaning of, um, you know, attributes of the text is re, uh, reconstituted, right? Is kind of re reshaped, right? So that would be one thing that would follow from, like, one, one of the reasons why academics are kind of interested in Remix is because it seems to have that political potential. It's, there seems to be an affordance of this kind of intervention in media, which seems to be that uh, it could undermine or subvert or adjust or amend or alter or in some way which is maybe politically progressive or aligned with our political opinions in some way, uh, it could change the meanings of cultural texts, right? It would be an intervention in the cultural flow that could have some politically interesting consequences, right? And that's why we see ideas around remix get stuck to other kinds of ideas around, say, culture jamming 
or uh, subvertising, right, or other kinds of ideas like that, right? So that would be the uh, one reason why academics are quite interested in it is because of this these apparent uh, political, as it were, affordances, right? That would be the first reason why why people might get interested in it. And another reason why people might get interested in it is because, and again, Buffy versus Edward is kind of a nice example of this, uh, there would seem to be one of the things that would be happening in order for us to enter into, you know, if you think about like the Lessig thing about, uh, you know, a read-only culture or a read-write culture, uh, one of the things which uh, people might get interested in about Remix is an idea that it could be facilitating a certain kind of democratic participation in culture, right? That those kinds of interventions could be democratic and could be democratizing culture, which is to say that anybody could be allowed to uh, participate. Maybe anyone can go and do this, right? That maybe one of the things that has happened to the kind of the uh, cultural... Uh, landscape is that the means of intervening in the cultural landscape have been democratized. They've been become available to anybody, right? So, I mean, if you if you were to imagine a time, I don't know, uh, 40, 50 years ago, if you wanted to get some, if you had some thing that you wanted to say or something that you wanted to kind of put out into the world in some kind of way, what were your options, actually? Maybe you could write a letter to the newspaper and hope that they might do something with that. But now it seems like your options are much broader or much uh, wider, or they're much more diverse, they're much more accessible, right? And so it would seem to be that ideas around remix involve this democratic participation in culture because maybe anyone can go and do this. You know, maybe anyone can have a clever idea and they can go, gee, you know, I was thinking about Star Trek or I was thinking about Harry Potter or I was thinking about Twilight or I was thinking about something. Anyway, I was thinking about some, uh, you know, I was thinking about Lady Gaga. I don't know, I was thinking about something. And I thought, oh, I wonder, maybe if we did this other thing with that, maybe if we treated that text in a slightly different way, we could kind of foreground or highlight some uh, meaning for that, which wasn't kind of visible before. And in that way, we could kind of actually change the shape of the cultural uh, terrain. We could change the standard political legibility of the cultural terrain through introducing our uh, interpretations, through highlighting our interpretations and uh, our kind of, in a sense, our, our, our p political uh, subjectivity. We could kind of introduce that into, uh, into how that text is being understood, right? And that that would change the meaning, as it were, of those, uh, of those texts. Now, why would anybody care about that is another kind of thing, right? But there is, in uh, basically in the history of kind of academic interpretation of culture, which is one reason why this is only one bit, right? Because we need to kind of contextualize that. But in the kind of history of the political interpretation of culture, there are ideas where people hope that, uh, and this is associated with a, a dead guy called Gramsci, Antonio Gramsci, and I, I won't bore you with this, but it's associated with an idea where maybe if we could make enough changes in the cultural domain, we could kind of change the way people think enough that it would become easier to make changes in the political domain. Right, so there are political investments in reading interventions in culture uh, as progressive, right? Uh, and what I'm going to try to argue is that actually we need to understand a bunch of other things before we can even begin to make or begin to start making those kinds of claims about how culture uh, works.